I've been trying to write this devotional for the better part of three weeks now, and for whatever reason, words just aren't sticking to the paper, so I thought I would try a video. Um, when I was writing it, the title was Take a Breath and Two Steps Back. <laughs> so keep that in mind as we move through this. I think you'll find it to be an appropriate summary of the encouragement that I pulled out of Acts 5. But that's where we're going to be, Acts 5, 33 through 40. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of context real quick. The apostles, led by Peter, are um, like full into their public ministry, right? So Acts 2, Peter preaches two sermons back to back that save 8,000 people, um, or that the Lord uses to save 8,000 people. It wasn't really his words that did it, but the move of the Holy Spirit. So um, their public ministry is moving and it's strong, and they are keeping on with it. And so um, the high priests, as per usual, aren't really having it. And so in, uh, in Acts 5.17, the high priests take the apostles, lay their hands on them, throw them in public jail. But then an angel of the Lord shows up and frees them from jail and actually instructs them to go back to preaching at the temple. And so they do. And when the high priests send for them, you know, to, to have them come back and so they can address this issue and figure out what they're going to do, um, they don't, the guards don't find them there. The, the, the apostles are not in prison because an angel of the Lord set them free. And then it's reported to them that not only are they not in prison anymore, but they're back at the temple preaching. And so as you can imagine, um, the high priests aren't too thrilled about this. Uh, their, their anger is definitely stirred. And so um, when Peter's confronted about it, he stands firmly in, in the gospel, and uh, which angered them further. And so that's where we pick up in, in Acts 5.33. And here's what 33 says. But when they heard this, referring to Peter's response, standing firm in the gospel, they were cut to the quick and intended to kill them. I had to look up what cut to the quick means. It basically means that they were um, ready to act. They were moved to action and they intended to kill them. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel. Now this guy, um, my study notes tell me that he was a famous Jewish teacher and leader and the scriptures in this verse are about to tell us that he's respected by all people. Now, I'm not going to pretend that to be well-known or respected by a large group of people that you have to, you know, be somebody respectable. Unfortunately, you don't uh, to gain the respect of, of some groups of people. But in this case, from the studies that I've done on this guy, um, it seems to me that uh, he was respected. It made sense that he was respected. He carried himself and he led with wisdom, which we're about to see here. So this is the guy that's going to speak into their situation. So a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up in the council and gave orders to put the men outside for a short time. So he basically calls a timeout and says, put, you know, send them out of the room. Let's talk about this. And in verse 35, he says, men of Israel, take care what you propose to do with these men. In other words, let's, let's be careful before you act. For some time ago, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a group of about 400 men joined up with him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away some people after him. He too perished, and all those who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I say to you, stay away from these men and let them alone, for if this plan or action is of men, it will be overthrown. But... If it's of God, you will not be able to overthrow them, or else you may even be found fighting against God. Verse 40 says they took his advice. And so, in short, right, what's happening here is he's saying, look, this has happened before. And in both of the cases that I'm sharing with you, these men rose up, they had a following, and this situation took care of itself. They perished, and all their following scattered, and it was a non-issue. Now, obviously, it needs to be stated that Gal uh, Gamaliel is a Pharisee, and he is not in this for the glory of the Lord. Uh, his, his motivation, much like the other Pharisees, is to maintain the religious system that's set up. And so I just I, I felt that clarification was necessary. He was respected by all peoples. I believe the man does have wisdom. But with all that said, the advice he's giving them is still mostly for their own interests right? Not for the glory of God. Nonetheless, the principle presented is very applicable to our everyday life. So he gives them these two examples and he says, in both these situations, 
it was taken care of all on its own. The whole thing dissipated and it was a non-issue, right? But, but it should be noted that if this is of God and you act, you're going to be found fighting against God and you won't win. There's wisdom. That's, that's truth right there, right? So in this case, no matter what they did, taking action was either going to give them unnecessary headache and drama in a situation that would resolve itself, or it was going to put them in a position to be fighting against God, uh, which is even less desirable than the first option, right? So maybe I'm just talking to people mostly with my personality who were quickly moved to action. Um, but this encouragement is one to take a breath, take two steps back and give God room to be God. You know, to leave space for God to be God. If he needs you involved, if he needs your action, he will make it abundantly clear to you. You know, but if he doesn't make it clear to you, the best thing you can do is take a breath, take two steps back and give him room to be him and handle the situation the way that he sees fit, which may not be aligned with the way that you see fit. And that has to be okay. I'm not one to um, encourage passivity, you know, so it's, uh, but that's not what this is. Inaction is not always passivity. And that's something I've had to resolve in my own heart. Sometimes doing nothing feels like I'm being passive in a situation that requires action, but that's not always the case. Sometimes the best thing I can do is nothing at all so that God has a space without my hands involved to do what needs to be done. And so um, that's what I got out of Acts chapter five. That's been in my head for weeks. Couldn't get the words on paper. Um, hopefully it came across okay on video. But again, the scripture was Acts 5, 33 through 40. And the title of this little devotional, I'd say, is Take a Breath and Two Steps Back.